Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Okay, so this video is gonna be a little bit different. It's all about how I track my cycle. I recently shared on my Instagram, <clears throat> my wellness journal for 2024, which I will share with you guys um, very soon. But I was showing my current system for well, like how I track my wellness and then the new system. And I had so many comments um, from people wanting to know more of how I track my cycle um, because they said that they, the majority um, either don't know how or it's new to them. They haven't heard of cycle tracking and they were asking for more. So I thought I'll do a detailed video on YouTube um, because with Instagram stories, it's each story's one minute. It's a pain in the butt to film more than a couple and it take, it's very time consuming, especially if I'm going to do the hands free so that I can actually use both hands to open up things. Um, so anyhow, so here we are. So this is my current system. So I just wanted to give you a quick overview of that and then share with you. I have now, this is 2018. I think this is 2018. So if you've been with me for a while, you know that I used to be in the classic size Franklin Covey, which is half, the pages are half letter. Um, so that's what these are. These are my storage binders. So I wanted to show you how I used to track my cycle. I have so many pages that they don't all fit in um, the storage binders. Now I have been tracking my cycle for when did I start doing it? Maybe 28? No, I feel like it was like, it was sooner than this. This is 2018, but I think it was about 2015, 2016 when I started to have symptoms and I didn't know what was going on. And when, how old was I then? I need the calculator. Hang on. 20... Where are we now? 2023? I think it was about 2015. So I was eight years ago. So I was 40. Okay. <clears throat> but I, I really feel like it started in my mid 30s, but it wasn't at the point yet that it was affecting my quality of life. That didn't really start until late 30s. And then, yeah, late 30s. So, and doctors didn't know how to help me. I didn't start seeing a naturopath until, when did I start seeing a naturopath? I don't know. Probably around that time in my late 30s. And she's the one that helped me understand what was going on with my body and my cycle. Because um, my doctor actually put me on the birth control pill to help me with what I was going through. And then what was happening with that is I had cramps every single day and I would call my doctor. I'm like, I have cramps every day. And he's like, oh, just stay on it a little longer. You know, it takes time for your body to adjust, blah, blah, blah. My hair started thinning. I started getting calf pain, like just weird things. So I went to the naturopath and she was like, when you're done this round of your pill, she recommended going off the pill because what I was experiencing was not normal. And I've learned since then that the birth control pill is not good for you. So anyhow, and it's a band-aid. It's not a solution. It's It treats symptoms, but it doesn't get to the root of the problem. And she let me know at that time, it's important that we figure out what's going on with my hormones because otherwise, once menopause comes, it'll be a very challenging road for me. So the, I, I was looking back through all of my planners and journals. I must have thrown them out or shredded them, um, but this is as early as I could find, 2018. So this is me um, tracking. These are the symptoms that I had at that time, um, like sore breasts, cramps. Um, and then in here, I indicated if I needed to take medication for my cramps, like if they were really bad, same with headache and same with hip pain. That's why there's meds underneath. So did I need to take any Advil or Tylenol to, because it was the pain was uh, enough that it was affecting my quality of life? So I'm one that I don't take any drugs unless I absolutely have to because I want my body to heal itself and, you know, do all do what it's meant to do. But sometimes the pain just gets too much. So this is me tracking how often I had to take 
because it got to the point where I was like, I feel like I'm taking a lot of Tylenol or a lot of um, Advil and I know it's not good for you. So I felt like I needed to start tracking it so that when I would go see my naturopath or the doctor, I can say, look, this is how often I'm taking drugs to help me with pain. You know, this isn't, this isn't how I want to live my life. Um, yeah, so this is the first one here that I could find. And then this one here, and I wrote down my cycles 30 days. So when I was tracking back then, my cycle was anywhere from 26 to 32 days, but typically it was 28 day cycle. That was, that went on for years and years, um, 28 days. And it wasn't until a year ago, August, that I started skipping and that perimenopause, um, kind of really started for me. Um, yeah. But I still track because I'm not consistent now. But um, anyhow, so then this one was 30 days. And I just wrote little notes in here. Um, headache from working out with a question mark. Like, I felt great when I woke up that day. But why did, when I did exercise, why did I get a headache? Um, this one here, sore breasts. I just put like a little bit. Like, it wasn't like all day kind of thing. It was just like, yeah, they hurt a little bit. Um, headache. So I would get headaches a lot back then. Um, so Tylenol and Advil because Tylenol didn't kill the headache. I needed to top up with Advil type idea. So yeah, so just like little notes here. And like, you know, headache again after the workout, like later. And that was another thing that helped me identify something going on with my, or my naturopath um, with my adrenals that I'm getting headaches after exercise. And it and that's when it kind of started where my body was telling me that intense exercise wasn't right for me um, anymore. I used to be an athlete, like extremely, extremely active in high intensity from the age of 16 up until my mid thirties. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so I start, when I started to get headaches and it wasn't new exercise, it's like, what, what? I'm not doing anything different. So I didn't know it then, but I know now that that was a sign. Um, so yeah, here's another month. Lots of notes here that I took and I circled here. This was a 26 day cycle and then all the symptoms. So the sore breasts, like, you know, when you're a teenager and when you, you know, um, maybe in your twenties, but I remember like just, you know, you'd get sore breasts, like maybe you, a couple days before your period would start and then it would go away. But for me, it would start um, like during, like when ovulation would start, I would have a relief, um, in the first like eight to 10 days of my cycle. And then it would hurt right up until my cycle would start again. Like it was, and, and, and to the point where I had to wear sports bras because like just, just every day, it wasn't even just when I exercised, it was just living. They just hurt all the time. Um, uh, let's see here in my headaches always I remember always in the first 10 days typically it was in the first five days I would get a migraine and then this hip pain and what I mean by hip pain it's um like in my piriformis which is a like a flat muscle that sits on the sciatic nerve or it's uh it's near the sciatic nerve very close to it but it's really deep in your butt and um, for me I would get referral pain it would start there and it'd wrap around my entire left hip so through physiotherapy and seeing a sports medicine doctor, um, I recognized or they helped me recognize that I don't have any problems with my hips, no bursitis or arthritis or anything like that. It was referral pain. And because I was tracking and showing, it was cyclical with my cycle because I didn't have hip pain the rest of the month, right? It was strictly like around my cycle. Some days, some months it would last longer and some months... Like this month was only three days, but this month was a lot of days. So yeah, being able to take this type of stuff to a doctor or a naturopath is just so instrumental in helping to figure out what's going on with your body. I highly recommend uh, if you are having symptoms. So yeah, I only had, like I don't have a full year in here, so I don't know. This is me tracking my exercise. I just found this workout log on line. And then I was using the health and fitness trackers from um, uh, Franklin Planner, but I don't think I was tracking cycling here. This was exercise and then just symptoms and then my diet. So I don't think I was tracking anything else. 
no okay um i wanted to explain here see how it says new moon waxing moon full moon waning moon so back in 2016 i went to this seminar and it was a woman talking about the female cycle and it was eye-opening and it was sort of based on this book here called woman code written by alicia or alisa vitti and christine northrup christine uh, christiane i'm sorry christiane northrup is a gynecologist in the u.s um she's been on oprah like eight times and i have another book of hers but her daughter I forget her name but her daughter was the one who was at the seminar and explaining our cycle and she was explaining it in a way that if you think about your cycle kind of like the four phases of the moon right so in this book on page seven or no 145 she talks about the four phases of your menstrual cycle the four hormonal phases of your menstrual cycle are a blueprint for how to organize your life Below, I'll show you how to zero in on what's happening with your hormones in each phase. Like, this was so powerful for me because it was getting to that point that it was affecting my life and, and affecting how I organize my life. Um, yeah, so here's phase one. Um, duration lasts seven to ten days. And so it talks about, like, the hormonal focus, body focus, lifestyle focus, food focus, exercise focus. So this was like, wow, this is amazing. This is really helping me understand what's going on with my body during these times. And with women, we change every day, right? Like men don't change at all, but women change every single day. And so we can feel amazing for a couple days. And then we have a couple days where we're extremely low. Like, you know, for the most part, our energy isn't consistent. So um, Christy, Christy Ann's daughter was talking about like the first three days of your cycle, um, she calls that the new moon phase, which, that's ovulary. What's the first phase? Oh, seven to ten days. Anyways, she talks about the new moon phase being typically when your period starts, right? And it lasts about three days. Um, or maybe that was just for me because my period is only like three days. Some women, it's five days, seven days, two days, like everybody's different. I don't 100% remember because I don't follow this anymore because I'm, I don't ovulate every month and I don't have a regular cycle. But um, anyhow, so yeah, you have your different phases. So new moon phase and then you have your waxing moon, which is after your period stops and your energy starts to um, get better. Then your full moon phase, which is um, ovulation time. And then you have your waning moon, which is when your body's getting ready again for... Um, for your period to start so I, I was looking through this book because she through, I bought this book because she talked about this book at that seminar so um, I was searching I haven't read this book since 2016 I probably should read it again as I'm going through this for this video I'm like oh I should read this again but um, anyhow I, I, I thought for sure that Christiane talked about the four phases of the moon in here I don't know if that was her daughter kind of putting a name to the four phases of the cycle I'm not really sure but anyways um, but this book is is good I it's perfect your cycle amplify your fertility supercharge your sex drive and become a powerful source but it's all about being in tune with your body in relation to your cycle because we're not taught this right we're just taught it's just something that happens with women like we you know you know that's it's all about um you, you know, have a period when you're not pregnant and that's kind of it. But it, there's no, we don't learn about how to plan our life around our cycle. It's sort of just something that happens as opposed to something that's a pretty big deal that happens in our lives. So this is sort of um, just giving you an, a, an idea of how I um, started tracking my cycle like this is when I started to get really in depth okay so that's 2018 I wish I had my old ones to show you but oh well this is 2020 I don't know what happened with 2019 no idea um so let's see some cycle trackers in here okay yeah so this is 2020 so this is three years ago 
and I think this is when the hot flashes started. Like I have here, really hot during sleep, really hot and tired, and my hot flashes started just when I had my period, and then they would go away. So this is when it started in 2020. So I started to, to really track this. But I was still doing the new moon, the waxing moon, full moon, waning moon um, here. So yeah, so where are we here? I don't think I tracked how long my cycle was. I do track that now, like how long it lasts. But anyways, um, see the sore breast, you can see it starts on ovulation and goes right until my period starts and then cramps for just three days, but I needed medication. Um, headache, I had um, one headache on the second day of my cycle and then again on the sixth, again on the 15th, um, and then hip pain and then dizzy. So I wrote that down here. Did I day two? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, day 25. Um, I wrote exhausted and dizzy. Tylenol helped a lot. Really bad headache later in the day. Tylenol and Advil, day 24. Yeah. So the purpose of this is to see the patterns month after month. And unfortunately, it does take a few months of consistent data before you can really pinpoint and before your healthcare practitioner can really help you pinpoint what's going on. Because my doctor would say things. I'm like, no, it's cyclical. It's with my cycle. I'm showing you like it's with my cycle. It's my drugs aren't going to help. Um, yeah. So yeah, I was still doing that there. 28 day cycle. Oh, I didn't track that one. I must have, maybe I switched systems there. All right, that's all I have to show you for that one, unfortunately. I don't think I have anything else. Did I track anything here? No. Okay, so that's that one's 2020. And it's neat when I go back and look at these, these um, because I'm like, this really does tell a story. So this is 2021. And I had my health and wellness in these. I did not have room in the rings. So I was tracking. So these are from Jane's Agenda. So if you remember, I used to use the weekly self-care log and the menstruation tracker with Jane's Agenda for a bit. So how many do I have here? Oh, look at this. I've got lots of data here. Nice. Okay, so for this one here, I have two months on one sheet. Okay, so I did, I stopped doing the different phases and just started tracking like my symptoms here. So this one here, these were my symptoms in, at this time, extreme tired, like not even just, I'm a little tired today. It's like, it, when I say extreme, I mean extreme, like couldn't drive. Like it, it was, you know, when you take a cold medication, it makes you drowsy. It was drowsy tired. It was, it was bizarre. That went on for a little while. And then my headache, hip pain, low back pain. So this is the D means I had to take drugs and I tracked here, um, 15 days, 17 days of how often I was taking drugs. And then here we go. Eight days, seven days started to get better here. Oh, and then pelvic pain. So getting like, you know, shooting pains um, deep in the pelvis. Just weird stuff, which I now have learned it's normal for, not, it's not normal, never mind. It's not normal, but it's not um, that uncommon, unfortunately. So I see a pelvic floor physiotherapist to help um, work on the tight muscles in the pelvic floor. Uh, rest is really important. So these are all perimenopause things. And I also, um, I don't have a thyroid. So my medication, so if I'm under too much stress, then it affects my thyroid levels, like with my medication. And then if the thyroid levels are off, then the thyroid levels cannot adjust with the other hormones in your body. So that was something I've just discovered, which I'm like, oh, that's why I've been suffering in that way all these years, which again, my doctor couldn't really help me 
with that, but um, yeah, still with the hip pain, not as much low back. I found, discovered that the low back pain was referral pain from my pelvic floor muscles being so uh, tight and they flare up when I get my period. Let's see piriformis, pelvic pain. It's like I get a release when my period starts and then, and then it comes back. So the headaches, just a lot of headaches, tired, fatigued, hot flashes, again, just during my cycle. And then this was the day before my cycle. And then here is July 23rd. I don't know what happened with the rest of that one, but anyways, um, this might be really small. I was using the Franklin Planner um, graph paper. And so I have what, one, two, three, four months on one side. And then I have notes over here. And then anything that was sort of out of the ordinary, oops, I wrote over here. So this one here, day five, 10 out of 10 for pain, nausea, extreme tiredness, motion sickness at times. Um, nauseous, very light, uh, very light. It's interesting too, because my cycles are so light, but the symptoms are so were so severe. Pain dissipated day 11 and then pain-free day 14. It's like, you know, the first 10 to 10 to 14 days every month being in pain. That's a lot of your life. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, so extreme tired, headache, hip pain, low back. The hot flashes, again, were just, just at the beginning of my cycle. And I didn't have any hot flashes that month. Um, yeah, and then I highlighted here day 17. Oh, September 7th. So that cycle was 31 days. Why did I highlight those? Anyways, day one tired, hip pain pretty bad. Day 28 to day five, really bad, lots of drugs. So anyways, when you do things like this and you can take them to your, your doctor or your um, naturopath or whoever you, you work with, it's nice to be able to show them this and then they can see the pattern. So it helps them to figure out what's going on. Look at this one here, hip pain. 20 days, I needed drugs for the first 11 days. I remember I was seeing an internal medicine specialist for a while and I asked him, like I showed him, like look at how often I'm taking drugs. Is this gonna hurt my liver? And he was like, no, no, you're fine. I'm like, okay. And my naturopath was like, let's detox your liver. Anyways, that's a whole other conversation. But yeah, mainly like just the headaches and just pain and the tiredness. Um, okay, and then I moved on to the menstruation trackers from uh, Jane's Agenda here. So I used these for a little while and then I stopped because I just didn't really like the tracking here. Um, so you can see the correction tape here because the, the symptoms that they had in here didn't apply to me. So I then I put in what my symptoms were. So flow, cramps. So the one, two, and three. So three being high, two being medium, and one being low. Um, yeah, and then sweet sleep quality. I like that they, so that prompted me to start tracking my sleep in, in my new way that I track. Um, yeah, anyways, I hope this is helpful for you to see what, what I'm tracking and how I do it. So you can do it yourself, kind of like burn, bullet journaling style, or you can purchase menstruation trackers from Jane's Agenda, or I'm sure you can find a shop on Etsy. I'm not sure. Um, I have never looked. Maybe I'll create one. Anyhow. Yeah, so this is another month. This is November. November 16th to December 16th. So this was a 30 day cycle. And yeah, just tracking all the things. And then this was a biohacking tracker, tracking moods and whatnot. So that's a little history on my, my trackers, my, my cycle trackers. And then if we go to where I'm at now, I like to have them all like I like I like a book bound book for wellness so that I'm not um I don't have loose papers everywhere and I have to go to different binders 
and things like that. Like it's just one book. So, oops. So here's how I'm tracking my headaches here. So the green represents like it's a mild headache. And then the red is migraine. Um, not necessarily migraine. Like sometimes I get the auras where I lose my vision for a little while and I have to lay in a dark room, you know, for hours, things like that. that those don't happen as often. But um, so when I say migraine, I mean like Tylenol couldn't kill the headache. Like I needed to take Tylenol and Motrin, right? Um, so that's what the red is. So this is, each column is represents a month. So I can keep track. What I did start to notice was that um, when I started to use a mouth guard, my headaches got better because I clench my teeth when I sleep. So I did notice that that got better. I think I need a new one because my headaches have picked up again. Sleep tracker. So the red represents broken sleep. And then the orange or the like brown color is like I slept solid through the night. And what's neat about this, like I had a big stretch here in July, probably because I was at the cottage a lot and I was very relaxed. <laughs> um, but for the most part, like I don't sleep through the night. Like I'll wake up. Usually it's because of temperature because I am too hot. I need to take my blankets off, move the fan around. Um, you know, all the things. And then this is body pain tracker. Actually, my body pain has been so good the last couple of months. And it's because I'm doing more breath work and I'm seeing a different pelvic floor physiotherapist. That's been, I've been learning so much. Um, and yeah, so I've been tracking like the red is like when I have that hip pain, low back and pelvic floor. I don't really get low back pain anymore with my period, which is nice. And then pelvic floor, that's a lot better too. And again, it's being consistent with my physio and like my physio appointments, but also the exercises that I have to do at home and um, recognizing when I need to rest. I'm not perfect at it at all. I had a very busy week this week and then I had, I had it came to a head yesterday. I had a very low day. I was emotional, the whole thing, <laughs> like a toddler, like I need, you know, I need a break, but um but yeah, I'm getting better. And then this is my period tracker. So the this represents like when I had my period. The dots are more like spotting, but not an actual flow. Um, but I skipped July. I didn't get one at all. And then it's weird. And then September, I was 23 days in between, which is like, what? And now I'm on day 40. So it's just, yeah inconsistent. I've been seeing uh, an endocrinologist. Finally, I had to wait nine months to get that appointment to get my thyroid levels under control. Um, and she did a lot of blood work on my hormones. And she said that I am still ovulating, just not every month. So this, I am 100% in perimenopause. So and then here's how I'm tracking my cycle. So and I'm, I'm putting my moods down here too to see if there's a correlation between where I am in my cycle. And so this represents my flow. So this was 51 days in between cycles and then my symptoms here. Look at the hot flashes. Like just, this one was better. I had a break here. But still, like this was pretty much every single day. The dots are like, yeah, it was a little warm, but I w didn't break out in sweats, you know, like where I was sweating and, and, you know, have to take clothes off and things like that. Just a little warm. So they were better this month. And then my moods, happy, sad, content, irritable, emotional, and then stuck energy. What I mean by that is like, it's like, I feel like I need a good cry but I'm not sad, but like, I just feel the trapped energy or something like that. Like, it's just weird. So that doesn't happen a lot. Like it happened a couple, like a few times this month. And then this month it only happened like once. It's like, I have to move my body on a regular basis to, to get that en energy moving. And this one here was 43 days in between. And like my hot flashes again, like lightheaded. I was really lightheaded this month. And when I say lightheaded, I mean, like I could be having a conversation with someone and if I'm talking too fast and getting too excited, I'm lightheaded. 
Like it's not just, oh, when I get up quick, I'm lightheaded. Like, you know, which is normal, right? We've all experienced that. If we bend over and then get up, you get lightheaded. No, this is just, I'm not even moving and I'm lightheaded. I do have low blood pressure, which my doctor, um, and I was seeing a specialist for a while on that. So I'm not fainting or anything like that. One doctor did want to put me on medication, but I was like, no, what can I do? I want to avoid medication. What can I do on my own? So like licorice tea um, and salt, making sure I'm eating a lot of salt, things like that is what the specialist said. But anyway, so here's headaches, lightheaded, um, breast pain. Like it's so much better now. Low back, still some low back. March, when did I start seeing my new physiotherapist, my pelvic physiotherapist? It was late spring, so you'll see that will get better. And then this month here, um, the hot flashes again, but then they did get better. Headache, tired, tiredness. Like for the most part, I'm so much better this, this year. This was 47 days in between. This one was weird. Day 40 had vertigo. Like I woke up so dizzy. Like the kind of dizzy where you feel like you're falling. Like not just a little like, woo woozy and lightheaded like this was like a vertigo it's so weird oh yeah and then my cycle and I had the most intense pain I have not experienced that in years and it just came out of nowhere I, I, I was like looking back through my calendar like was I extra busy I remember I was at the cottage this was the May long weekend um, for us here in Canada and uh yeah I was at the cottage our son it actually I, I got it on his birthday his birthday's on Victoria typically Victoria Day it's May 23rd but anyways but it was that that long weekend so we were all at the cottage and my family is like off having fun and I'm like I'm on the couch with a hot pad taking drugs like it, it like knocked me down so weird out of nowhere I haven't had pain like that in a very long time I don't know why that happened but anyways the low back the pelvic floor pain like I had it all the hip I had hip pain every single day and again when I say hip it's like the side of my hip it's um deep in my my butt and it just wraps around my entire left hip it's just awful lightheaded very lightheaded this month yeah just so so strange and then June 52 days cycle and symptoms are much better this month and no cycle this month but still have the symptoms <laughs> not as bad though you can see it's more dots than actually shaded in and then august and so as far as hot flashes i started to use progesterone cream that my naturopath gave me oh gosh when did i start taking that i started when i first started it i would journal about it at the back like to see how long it would take to kick in Started at March the 14th, the progesterone cream. So yeah, my hot flashes were getting better. But with the, with the cream, I have to stop taking it the first 10 days of my cycle. So then I would get hot flashes during that time. But much better. And then I ran out in, my na in August, my naturopath was on vacation. So hot flashes, see like no hot flashes until my period. And then she was on vacation. So then after my period, the hot flashes went away. I was like, oh, maybe I don't need it anymore. Oh, wait, never mind. Look. They're, yeah, they came back. So they were so good. I was like, oh, I'm not feeling hot every day. Like, it's amazing, life changing. And so I just saw her three weeks ago, and I'm back on the progesterone cream, but it's, it hasn't fully kicked in yet. Like, I'm sweating right now filming this video. Anyways, such is life. But anyway, so yeah, that's the journey of my cycle tracker. If you are. If you are curious, I highly recommend just, you know, for me, how it evolved was just really thinking about like, what am I feeling through the month and your cycle tracker? It's not just about when you're on your period because your body's changing every day. It's not just the time that you're bleeding. Your, your body's going through things every day that we're not even aware of. Right. Um, and so I would just, I just started keeping track. I start, would add to the list. Okay. Now I'm feeling this. I'm going to add that to the list and see if I feel that next month. Right. And if after a couple months I haven't felt that way again, then I remove it from the list. Like it's, it, it evolves. And then I've got this set up, even though we're end of October. 
because I'm not necessarily doing like just like for example today's Saturday day 40 um, we'll go here and then I'll start this one and then I've got two more pages for the next for November and December although I might only need one more but anyways um, yeah that's my cycle tracker how it has evolved over the years and then my wellness for I'm not going to get into all of this right now um, I'm going to do a separate video on this but I'm going to be tracking it in here and this is what I was sharing on Instagram and everyone was like what is that I need to know more um, so yeah my cycle tracker is going to be going in here so I've just got the first two months done I'm not going to do the whole year because again my symptoms may change depending on how I progress through my perimenopause um yeah so this is something I see myself tracking for a very long time to come um, probably until I I go through menopause and I highly recommend every woman do it no matter what your age um, my daughter's 26 and she's had some struggles with her cycle and so we've started tracking and it's just, it really helps your diet, your exercise, how much you rest and recover. We're not built like men where we can do the, all the intense exercises and we just recover, we recover differently than men. So depending on where you are in your cycle, I feel it didn't really start to affect me until my mid thirties. In my twenties, I was, oh God, I did like, I say stupid things to my body because I was like, extremely active and um yeah and I recovered so quickly and yeah so mid-30s it started to change so yeah just start paying attention and perimenopause can happen they say like up to 10 years before you actually go through menopause so it's not just uh something that happens around that time I look back and my hormones have started to change since my late 30s um, and perimenopause um, a, a year ago, August, and I'm 48. So it started when I was, I would say it started, yeah, a year ago, August. So that's like, I think I would have been 46. Yeah, I would have been 46 when that's when it started. But I, looking back, I feel like it even started before then. It just really escalated. So the sooner you get on top of it, the less you will suffer when perimenopause and menopause comes because it's inevitable as it happens to all women um although there are some women I talk to I never went through that <laughs> so they are out there you might be one of them which I hope you are because it's not fun anyways let me know if you have any questions at all I highly recommend this book it was very helpful for me I'm also reading another book right now called hormone intelligence um and that's another really good one let me hang on one sec I'll go get it and show you so it's this book here by Dr. Aviva Ram. I also follow her on Instagram. She posts a lot of really good stuff. And it's not just about menopause. This is about fertility, childbirth. It's all things women and our hormones. And this book, it's, it's believe it or not, it's a very, very easy read. So this is where I'm at right now. Yeah, it's really good. And she gets into diet and herbs and things like that. Um, which I probably should be reading this right now. <laughs> Just skip to the diet part because I do believe that um, things that we eat, there's a lot of hormone disruptors out there, certain foods that we eat um, that affect our hormones. We have to be careful from the creams that we use, um, like makeup, things we put on our skin to what we ingest and put in our bodies we it really affects affects men too but it just affects women that much more so anyways that's a little journey on my cycle tracking i hope that was enjoyable for you if you have any questions let me know happy to help you on your road to understanding uh, how your body works in relation to your cycle have a great day everyone we'll see you in the next video bye